All right, gang, so the uh, identities we're going to work with today, the sole purpose is for solving equations. So that means we get to a situation like this, and everybody freaks out and says, ah, Mr. Joyce, we have never done trig equations with two different functions in it. We've done, like, all sines, all cosines, all tangents. But now you have some new tricks that you can use to rearrange this. So really simply, the first one, I'm just going to repeat it like this. Um, 2 sine x cos x. So it's equivalent, but now I'm getting to the point where it's going to look familiar to you. I, I can rewrite this factoring out cosine. It'll be oops, cosine of x times 2 sine of x minus 1 equal to 0. So now I'm back to the equations we solved previously, and I just had to use the identities to get there. So that's basically we're making a bridge from what you know now to what you knew before. Okay, use the identities to get there. Uh, in this one, cosine x to be equal to 0. In 0 to 2 pi, that'll happen at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And for 2 sine x minus 1 to equal 0, that means the sine of x has to be a half. So a positive number is going to be in these two quadrants for the sine. The triangle that I want to work with is this one. So my reference angle is right up here, and it's pi over 6. So reference is pi over 6. I can reconstruct this. Pi over 6 there. Pi over 6 there. So that gives me the rest of my answers here. Pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So there are, in fact, four answers. So I'm going to get you to work on the uh, second one by yourself. Think about your goal usually is you got more than one function or something that you need to simplify down. Right now you have cosine and sine squared in the next example. So what could you do to make a replacement? So now you would have, say, all cosines or something like that that would be easier to work with. So can anyone share what identity they chose to work with here? Sure, go. Good. So sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. That's a good choice because then if I want to make the replacement, um, you can even shuffle it around so it would look like this. Cos squared x minus 1 is negative sine that's a terrible S. That's embarrassing. Let me try that again. Negative sine squared x. That way I can see the replacement I'm going to make right there. So I'll get 2 cosine x plus 1, then plus cosine squared x minus 1. That whole thing, negative sine x squared, I replaced. So the 1 and the negative 1 would disappear. And it's going to leave me with... Um, cos squared x plus 2 cos x minus 3 equals 0. And that should be something familiar now that we've solved before. Um, so I'll factor it. Um, do you remember what happens with this? Yeah, there's no answer. We just reject it because there's nowhere we can find cosine to be equal to uh, negative 3. So now that we've done cos graphs, just remind yourself that graph goes from negative 1 to 1. There's no way to get, get it up to negative 3. So that one, we just reject it. We don't have to worry about that. So it's kind of nice. We don't have to solve anything. Um, but here, cosine of x has to equal 1. So x would equal... Zero, thank you. So this is on your unit circle. Cosine is the x-coordinate. So here's the coordinates for one, zero. So can I just see by show of hands how many people got that one? OK. Yeah, question, go for it. Uh, so you mean you wanted to solve it like? Uh, 
something that would look like this, cosine x times 2 cosine x um, equals to 3. Uh, you could, but that's going to be a challenge because now it's not one of the pieces. Both of those pieces are going to be part of it because like, I could be root 3 and root 3. I could be 1 and 3. I could be negative 1 and negative. Like, there's so many different answers that that's very difficult. That's why we always make it equal to 0 because to get it equal to 0, only one of these guys has to be equal to 0. If that's 0, whole thing cancels out. Same thing here if that's 0. So I can look at them one at a time. It's a lot easier. Um, I would say if you had a graphing calculator and you were going to solve with a graphing calculator, that it, you could definitely do it just as easily with a graphing calculator. But certainly by hand, you want to make it equal to 0. Okay, um, let's see here. Next one, people feeling like, do you, do you want a bit of a start on this or do you want to just give it a try? Do give it a try, okay. Okay, so I'm just about to wrap this one. If you uh, haven't had a chance to see and compare my solution to yours, I mean, you guys know me pretty well by now. It could be that I've made a mistake. I've been known to occasionally do that. Oh, good, you guys didn't laugh when I said occasionally. Uh, it's a sine graph, so it's going to be above. The two answers I'm looking for are in quadrants 1 and 2, so exact values would be 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6. Uh, sine x equals 0 at 0 and pi. Now, I remember uh, we did trig equations and people were concerned about, I said, don't drop things out or cancel things out because you're going to miss parts of your equation. Um, that was in a different context. That was a context like if you might have had something, say, I don't know, cosine of x here and you canceled them out. Okay. The reason that this is okay to cancel it out now is if you think about what happens, you, cosine disappears. Let's just say you go, oh, Mr. Joyce, I'm worried that cosine um, equals zero is going to be an answer. Well, if it was an answer, you'd have to divide by zero because cosine's on the bottom of this fraction here, right? So, anyways, it's uh, you should you don't need to be worried the same way you were um, when we we first did the trig equations, yeah. Sine 2x equals 1 over 2 sine x, second step. Right here. Yes. Equals 1 half sine x, yeah. If I divide both sides by sine x. Oh, I see. Then one of them would disappear, yes. Okay. Yes, so that's a good example. So Leo is saying here that uh, if you did that, you'd end up, if I divided sine out of both, here's an example again where something is going, it, it disappears out of my... Oops, it would have just been a half. It does disappear. I lost a sign when I did that. And uh, it's, it's because at this point, I'm not dividing by zero. There's no problems uh, with sine x, so I, I want to leave them in my equation. But this part in the beginning um, was OK to cancel out, because if cos x equaled 0, it wouldn't be a solution anyways. It would have been uh, dividing by 0 on the bottom. 
Okay. So let's try the next one here and see what we can come up with. Uh, this one's always tricky because you have to choose, right? Cosine 2x, what do you think uh, of the three possibilities, which one do you think you'd want to use here? Yeah, I like that one. How come? Because that makes them all cosine, right? So now I have an equation that I can factor, so I'll let you guys work on that. Okay, so I end up with three answers here. After it gets factored, I have um, x equal to pi. I also have 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Um, if it's negative a half, that means I'm going to be in quadrants 2 and 3. And the triangle that it came from is the one over here on the right. So is, can anybody, first of all, confirm that? Did it, anybody else get that answer? Because I, okay. It's okay? All right. Uh, it should be x equal to pi. Oh, zero. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's the angle zero there. And the angle. There we go. OK. So the last uh, one we'll look at is a little strange um, just to get going. If you had nothing else to do here, maybe you would do what you do in identities, and you'd just change them all to sines and cosines. And at this point, you have an equation with all cosines. So we can you know, try and work with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everybody by cosine in this equation. So that would give me 3 cos squared x plus 2 cos x. Um, equals 5. So again, I'm, I'm going to have to factor some of this. So 3 cos squared x plus 2 cos x minus 5 is equal to 0. And cos squared x, I'll do some factoring. So I've got cosine x plus 5 and cosine x minus 3. Divide these all by 3. So the factored form would look like 3 cos x plus 5 cos x minus 1. So the first thing I'm going to look for then is 3 cos x plus 5. Where is that equal to 0? And of course, that's bigger, well, I guess that's smaller than negative 1, so we can just reject it. There's no possible place. If I was to graph this, it would look like this. There would be my cosine, and there would be negative 5 thirds down here. They never meet. So no answer from the first one. We'd also have to look at where cosine 
x minus 1 is equal to 0. Um, so where does cosine of x equal to 1? Yeah, and so this time I'll not only draw the angle right, I'll write it down as well, right? So x equals 0 is where that happens. And um, the only thing you're going to want to do now that you're dealing with uh, all these identities is x equals 0, you're going to want to check. Is there any problems if you used x equals 0? Uh, not in this case because it's cosine, right? So we can use that. That'll work out as a solution. If it turned out that one of the fractions in there divided by 0 was undefined or had a problem, then we'd have to reject that because we can't use an answer that's undefined. So for this one, it would be x equal to 0. And that leaves you with one more thing to do.